Welcome to the last lesson video of Chapter 5, 5.8 Graphing Absolute Value Functions. I'd like to personally thank you for watching these videos. I make them for you, uh, and I really appreciate that you are watching this. So thank you so much, and please don't pass around this info, your note sheets, to other people. They need to actually watch the videos so they can they can learn and do well. So now let's get started. Our objectives... We can graph absolute value functions and translate the graphs of absolute value functions. Let's first of all define what an absolute value function looks like. It has a V-shaped graph that opens up or down. The parent function for the absolute value function is Y equals absolute value of X. Remember, a parent is the leader of a family, and the parent function of the absolute value family is Y equals absolute value of X. Now let's talk about what a translation is. It is a shift of a graph horizontally, vertically, or both. And when you do a translation, this results in a graph of the same shape and same size, but in a different position or location. And I'm sure you've done translations before. Okay, let's try example one. Below are the graphs of y equals absolute value of x and y equals absolute value of x minus 2. How are the graphs related? Okay, well, the graphs have the same shape. We should definitely write that. So same shape um, and same size. But the location is different. Take a look at the parent function on the left side. It is having its kind of it's kind of like a vertex. It's the minimum point at zero zero, whereas the right graph has its minimum point at zero negative two. So you can notice that each point on the right graph is two units, two units lower than the corresponding point on the parent function on the left side. So basically what I'm talking about is that the graph of this function right here is the graph of the parent function translated two units down. So now let's write that. Now we're going to discuss what the domain and range is of each function. So remember, domain is the x values. So you're going to look at the horizontal axis. The domain of both graphs is all real numbers. That means that all numbers, no matter what they are, are x values of the functions. They work when you plug them in. A shorthand way to say all real numbers is to use this symbol right here. It's a fancy R. That means all reals. Now the range is the y values. They do have different ranges because one's shifted uh, up slash down two units. So the range of the left side, the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Because as you can see on the graph, it starts at zero and goes up from there on. So y is greater than or equal to zero. The range for the other function is, here's the function, y equals absolute value of x minus 2. The range of that function is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Because as you can see, the y value starts at negative 2 and then it goes up from there. Okay, now let's specifically talk about vertical and horizontal translations. So here are some examples now. And you definitely want to fill in your chart that I made for you. So now let's graph these. The first one is y equals absolute value of x plus 1. You can see that the number is outside of the symbols. That means we are going up or down. So the number is outside of the absolute value symbols. This is really, really important. Outside means up or down. When you see a positive number, you're going up. So start with the parent graph. It's the red one that is already drawn for you. And the new one is just shifted up one unit. 
and I'm drawing it off a bit. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So that is the function absolute value of x plus 1. Now we're going to graph the next one right below it. Absolute value of x minus 2. The number is outside of the symbols once again, so that means we're going down two units. So 1, 2, we start there, and then keep counting down two from each point on the red graph. So this is the function absolute value of x minus 2. So hopefully you have noticed that when the number is outside of the symbols, you are going to translate it vertically, aka up and down. Now let's take a look at the horizontal translations. The numbers are inside of the absolute value symbols. So when the numbers are inside, you know you're going to go left or right. Now this is the tricky part. When you see a plus or a positive number inside the symbols, you're going to the left, not the right. And the reason why we're doing that is because the equation for absolute value has a negative sign automatically inside the symbols. So basically what's happening here is we have this going on. So what's happening, we have that negative 1 right there, that's why we're going to the left 1. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the x minus 2 absolute value. We're going to the right because it's a minus. So we have x minus a plus 2. That's basically what's happening. That's why we're going to the left 2. 1, 2... So as you can see, we have two different examples. I use the exact same numbers um, for the horizontal and vertical translations to show you the difference. So just a little recap for you before we go on. Vertical translation, the numbers are outside of the symbols. Horizontal translation, the numbers are inside the symbols. And for the horizontal translations, you must think opposite of the, the typical way we do. If there's a plus sign, you're going to the left. And if there's a minus sign inside, you're going to the right. Now let's put these to practice. Graphing a vertical translation. The first one we have plus 2. So you always just want to plot the parent graph first, and the parent graph always looks the same. So it always starts at 0, 0, and always goes up 1 over 1. So this is the parent function. y equals absolute value of x. And now we're going to count up to. So 1, 2, the new point's right there. 1, 2, etc. So this is the easiest way to do problems like this is just graph the parent function and then the new one, just translate it. Another approach um, is to make a table of values. I know some of you like to do that, but a translation is faster. Now let's try the right side. We have y equals absolute value of x minus 6. Let's draw the parent function again. Now we're going down 6. So this was up 2 and this is down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, starting at the very bottom and going up 1 over 1. So there is our new graph, y equals absolute value of x minus 6. And the new graph for the first one was the top one. Okay, let's take a look at what horizontal translations look like. Now, the numbers are inside of the symbols. So remember, when you see a plus sign, it's technically going to the left. So we're going to plot the parent graph once again.
and we are going five units to the left. So you count over, start at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's where it starts, and then it just goes up from there. So that is the answer. Y equals absolute value X plus five. Make sure you label your graph. Now let's take a look at the right side. We have absolute value of x minus 4, the number's inside, that means we're going either left or right. It's a minus, so that means we are going to the left. Technically it looks like this, minus a plus 4. So that's why we're going to the right. So we need to plot our parent graph. And we're going to start at 0, 0 again and go 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, put a point there, and then up 1 over 1. y equals absolute value of x minus 4. So typically we do the parent graphs in dashed lines. Um, you may see me doing that when we go over the bell work tomorrow, but it really doesn't matter as long as it's obvious which one is the answer. Now question, how can you check that your graph is correct? You can use the equation that we are given to check, check the points on the graph. Make sure that the points are work solutions for the equation and then you know that the points actually work and you have the right graph. Now here's the lesson check. I just want to tell you something real quick. If you ever see absolute value of x with a negative number in front of the symbols, you know that the absolute value function is going to be flipped upside down. So it's going to be an upside down v. So if the number is negative in front of the absolute value symbols, you know that this, the graph will be flipped upside down. Feel free to try this lesson check now. Otherwise, you can make sure that you did 5.7 lesson check, and we're almost done with this chapter. See you soon.